Hi, and thanks for dropping by Visual Light Photography, a place where we put a premium on creative ideas, inspiration, and making pictures as opposed to just taking pictures. Now today on Neighborhood Photographer, we're going to be taking a look at clotheslines. Now today's topic falls right into the making pictures idea. For me, making photos is all about feeling the subject. It's about getting that feeling out through photography. Now, in my part of the world, clotheslines were everywhere before dryers became popular in the late 1950s and early 60s. As a child, I remember playing outside and having the ball I was using getting caught up in the clothes, that kind of thing. It was a way of life, a way of life that for many in the world has never changed. And where I live, due to energy concerns and just the desire to have clothes dry and fresh air, it's enjoying a resurgence. So it's with that nostalgic spirit we explore shooting clotheslines and how to bring out that jaunty yet almost melancholy feeling of days past. So how do we make, as opposed to just take, pictures of clotheslines? How do we build in that feeling of nostalgia? Well, we're going to show you a few ways to highlight clotheslines and to build in different feelings. There are ways to do it. Uh, as usual, comments and questions can be addressed down below. Let's take a closer look now at shooting clotheslines. So I'm walking down the street and this catches my eye. Now clearly this isn't the final product, but seeing that clothesline coming out of the dark into the light is what really attracted me here because it was deep shadows in there and then the line, the clothesline coming out into the sunlight really attracted me. Not to mention the angle, kind of a diagonal, that sort of thing. So I started walking to the right down the sidewalk, then to the left. And I was trying to compose something and clearly I wanted to move in closer. So this is what I got. I moved in closer. Now, the thing is, there's more to it than just moving in closer. If I go one step to the left or one step to the right, it doesn't look the same, right? And what I liked about this was that the clothesline worked as a design element because it swings up this way and then continues up these spiral stairs or this way and then down the spiral stairs. Okay, so it splits, but it all works in to the flow of the image. So that's one thing that I liked about being in this particular position, all right? The other thing, of course, is the colorful clothing. The other thing after that is the sunlight coming through some of that clothing and really, really making it stand out. Now, I was also looking for something a little more nostalgic. You can tell it's, you know, old in the sense that the buildings are relatively old. Uh, you can see the spiral staircase is classic. Uh, for this part of the city, but I want it to make it look like it was kind of from the 50s. Okay, that, that was in my mind, the 50s or 60s. So I toned it. Now I didn't use sepia, I used a brownish tone to kind of age it. So yes, you've lost the color, but you've gained the aging of it, right? But I want it to go one step further. So I took it through a program called Analog Effects Pro, which is part of the uh, Nick software collection from Google. And I kind of scratched it up a little bit, okay? And I made it look like aged film. So it went from this to that. And that, to, to my eye, looks like it's rather old. The only tell on this is that it is very clear. And usually when you're talking about something that's been really aged and it was something taken in the 50s or 60s, it wouldn't have been, the bricks wouldn't have been so clear and so sharp. So that's something to look out for. If you really, really want to make it look aged, you would have to make it not necessarily blurry, but not quite as sharp. All right, you're walking down an alley. Now, the alley was actually a little bit brighter than this. In post-production, what I did was I put a, a very deep vignette around the edges because I wanted to make it look like you're standing back in the shadows of this alley and you're looking at the clotheslines that are lit up by the sun. My next move was to zoom in a little bit closer, which didn't really do much for me. 
and certainly isn't nostalgic, although I liked the way the clotheslines were kind of, you know, at different angles. But I decided to have some fun and just turn it into a bit of a cartoon almost. All right, kind of like a poster effect. And what I really liked about this was, was the bricks. Look at the bricks here and then look at the bricks now. I mean, they're just, oh, it's just lit up and it's posterized and it's bright and it's, it's fun. It's just fun. That's it. There's no nostalgic uh, aspect to it, but it is just kind of fun. This shows that you don't necessarily have to have clothes on the line to make it interesting, as you see the clothes pegs here on this particular clothesline. Not really a clothesline, someone just flying some flags. Same here. But look at all the clotheslines in back. They're just zigzagging everywhere. It's, it's a, a mass of lines. And uh, then there's a little bit of color thrown in just for fun. Now, if you're talking about nostalgic, a great place to go is into the country. And sometimes you come across really interesting clotheslines. On this late fall day, bright sunny day, and you've got that, look at the warm quality. And then you've got this clothesline with all these different color t-shirts on it. It's amazing. Clotheslines. Here in Newfoundland, Labrador, Canada, and you've got this beautiful harbor called Rose Blanche. And I mean, I'm up here taking pictures this evening, this late afternoon, early evening and of the harbor. And then I came across the clothesline and, you know, I just, for me, it says, you've got to take a picture of it. One thing too, you want to be aware of with clotheslines, uh, especially on windy days, uh, you want to be aware that, you know, clothes can be flying and that can be very interesting too. And though I took this a handheld, sometimes you might want to put your camera on a tripod and maybe take a one or two second exposure so that the clothes aren't clear and crisp and that they have kind of a surreal flowing effect. So you might want to try that with your clothesline projects. Again, a little bit surreal there. And a clothesline in the fog. Can you see it in the distance there? Those clothes couldn't have been drying too quickly with all that moisture, but hey, what choice do you have? And the fog cleared soon after I took that shot. Again, in the country, is there anything much more classic than a clothesline going from the house to a tree? A great big tree. And last but not least, you can take a picture through a window as the case here, and often clotheslines tell a story. If you look a little closer, you can see there's a baby in the family. So if you were wondering, why the heck would I shoot clotheslines or any number of other things that are in the neighborhood, hopefully we just gave you some ideas and some inspiration to get out there and to shoot clotheslines. Because, as with everything in the world, it's not what you see, it's how you see it, and I'll see you soon.